Welcome back. COVID and its subsequent lockdowns have led to an explosion in people using buy now, pay later schemes. Despite the well-documented dangers, Aussies more than doubled their spending, dropping nearly $12 billion, wow, in the last financial year alone. To talk us through this rise and how we can avoid those risks, we're joined by financial advisor Helen Baker in Brisbane. Helen, Morning. why did we sign up for these schemes during a pandemic? Yeah, I think it was a combination of we wanted to make our homes nice, we wanted to entertain ourselves while we were at home, but we also had that uncertainty about, you know, will I get government support? How secure is my job? How secure is my health? So almost like pushing the debt obligation down a little bit mm. and just the ease at which these opportunities pop up every time you buy something online gives you the option to pay by various forms and so it's nice and easy and simple. OK, the convenience is there, but what are the traps and the dangers? Yeah, I think the dangers are that, you know, you can end up signing up to multi of these platforms. So we know over 55% of people are have more than one. So the risk is that all of a sudden these debts come in at the same time. You've got those obligations. Do you still have your job? Have your hours been cut back? or combine it with this cost of living that we've currently got and can you actually service what these uh, commitments are. And then other risks are around, although mortgage brokers say it doesn't affect your ability to get other loans, it does affect their ability of the bank to look at you and go, are you safe to loan to because you have these commitments ongoing. And one of the other ones, which is kind of a good thing if you pay it back, they increase your limit. So there's an expectation there that if they're increasing my limit, then maybe I can spend more and it's fine. But obviously there's a point when that becomes just not serviceable anymore. So it's a combination of issues around security of being able to repay those back. And let's talk about those repayments. For people who are out there and they're struggling with their repayments, what can they do? Yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because generally these people have bad credit ratings or have problems getting other forms of credit that will be able to lengthen that out. So the first thing I think you need to do is just stop accumulating any more. And then I guess it's as simple as getting more income coming in or cutting down other expenses. The maths kind of have to work for you. So we know at the moment there's a load of opportunities out there for jobs, um, part-time jobs, casual jobs. Maybe you just have to take on an extra role for a short term just to get that extra cash in mm. to clear these debts and then be really, I guess, aware of the commitments. Do you really, really, really need to buy that thing or that amount of money and just try and pull back so that you don't get yourself caught into this debt cycle and build yourself a buffer. I know lots of people who have the, the money on the side, but they just feel more secure keeping that cash for themselves and smoothing out these repayments rather mm. than having spikes in their spend. So it's really getting con control over those finances for you. Really good advice, Helen. Thanks so much for joining us. And if you want to hear more advice from Helen, you can grab her book, On Your Own Two Feet. It is in any major retailer, in-store or online.